Wake up, NHL fans. We have a lot to talk about on today's Morning Cup of Hockey alongside Kobe Cohen. I'm Johnny Lazarus. Love is in the air. It's Valentine's Day, but most importantly, there's a lot of NHL action from last night to get into. Brad Marchand's 1,000th game. Alexander Ovechkin on a tear with scoring goals. He's getting closer and closer to Wayne Gretzky's record. We're going to talk about Connor McDavid, six assists night. Uh, Ridley Gregg getting five, or no, excuse me, Morgan Riley getting five game suspension. Uh, and then we'll have Matt Murley from Spit and Chicklets on toward the end of the show to talk about the NHL on TNT and Spit and Chicklets simulcast tonight on True TV and Max. So we'll hear about all that going on. But before we get into anything, Colby, Valentine's Day. I don't know if you're a lover or not. Did you do anything nice for the wife this morning? Are you sure you want to give me the floor right now with this type of tee up? No, maybe. I don't know. I don't know where you're going to go. We we talked about this before the show. Something that I really wanted to address. Should I should I wait or should I address it now? Our Flyers bet. It's, is that really what you think I'm talking about, Johnny? I think you, I never you know, know where you're gonna go, man. Just, okay. just what do you want to say? <laughs> I didn't even actually really know it was Valentine's Day today. To be uh, to be completely transparent, it's it's mm -hmm. not a big day for us we we have a very young child who is the focus of everything right now um so she's our little valentine even though she's she's already on her first nap of the day right now so i'm sure you've got some plans though you've probably got a couple of different dates planned tonight you probably got no. like a 5 5 p.m seating and then like an 8 p.m seating and then like an 11 p.m <laughs> meet up for drinks with some of Give your me a lot of credit <laughs> for, for some of your different uh friends we'll call them so <laughs> now my my plans tonight are to cook a steak pour a glass of red maybe two or three and uh watch the chicklets simulcast on NHL on tnt so yeah that'll be pretty cool i'm yeah. I'm, I'm really interested to see how that goes because we've seen simulcast done um you know in different sports different markets some work some don't um you know everything the chicklets guys seem to touch seems to work right so uh, that'll be cool to have Merle's on later in the show today just to kind of get his uh, insight on on what we can expect or how much he's been involved in the planning of it. Obviously, Merle's lives in Sweden, so it's it's not quite uh, boots on the ground all the time. But um, yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be cool to to hear his point of view and perspective on it all. And we'll have to give him some shit. Why? Why isn't Merle's on the on the cast? That That's what I, I think want he to might be. I think he might be. I'm I'm not too positive how the whole thing is working. I know they're promoting it as it's biz RM wit, right? That's like what's on the graphic that I've seen. But yeah, well, that's kind of what I assumed. Yeah. But I, I think Merle's and even Colby might be making an appearance. I, I'm not too positive. So I guess, you know, that's gonna help to have him on to explain how everything's working. Yeah. Um those guys, but, those guys, Merle's and 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 Arm Dog have been big additions. Like yeah. obviously those chicklets guys, they don't need much help, but those guys are such good personalities and they're such different personalities. So mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm pretty happy at the addition to, to Merle's and, and arm dog. So we'll, we'll table that for now and we'll, we'll save it for when Merle's comes on. He's supposed to come on around nine 30. Um, you Jeremiah know, is already him. giving us shit in the chat. He said, I'll believe when Merle's on when I see him. <laughs> you and us both. But Jeremiah, just so you know, we're, we got a whole different streaming platform. We're, uh, we're back to the the same platform that um, DFO Live uses, so it's a it's a little more basic, it's a little more friendly. Um, so we're confident that that Merle's will work. So pipe down from Alaska, all right? Go, go get your snow boots on and shovel out your driveway <laughs> or something. Um, but you know, before we kind of go into everything, there there was a lot of stuff to talk about from last night. I mean, you know, we can go into the Maple Leafs. Bobby McMahon has a hat trick with Marner and Tavares out and Morgan Riley out. Um, Marshan's a thousandth game. You know, our producer Vic actually texted us, like, hopefully Marshan scores in overtime so we could leave with that in the morning. And then he gets a backdoor pass, wide open net, that and was, throws it over the crossbar. That, I mean, that we were both been, like, OMG. That would have been such a great ending for his 1000th game had he buried that. But man, Vasilevsky, he made a couple of saves in overtime and just kind of reminds everybody, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm still the best goalie in the world. I can still put my, you know, put, put a team on my back and, and win a game. So, you know, <clears throat> what's funny about Marshawn is, or Marshan, depending on the season is a lot of people kind of debate, uh, if Marshy is a hall of famer and 
I just don't even understand how that could be something that is debated. I mean, he he's done a ton in the NHL and, and I was kind of looking up his, his, his stats just to, you know, see if, if it matches what everybody just would assume. And I mean, you're talking about a guy who's got 912 points in 1000 games. So he's almost a point a game player, um, mm -hmm. you know, throughout a thousand games. And I know a lot of the, the non point a game seasons were early on because it's, it's been totally different for him the second half of his career. How about this? He's also got 128 penalty minutes. He's got 146 playoff games. And in the playoffs, he's got 128 points. We know for sure after this season, he's going to be at 150 playoff games for sure. We know he's getting four games minimum. I think he'll get more than that, but obviously mm -hmm. we never know. Um, you know, he's not done. I mean, I, I, I foresee Marshawn getting to... 12, maybe 1300 games in the NHL or potentially more. I mean, you look at how high of a level that he's playing at and it doesn't really look like he's slowing down. And, and one thing I never really understood is why don't playoff games count towards that quote unquote 1000 game marker? Because I feel like for every one playoff game, you should be credited two or three regular season games. I mean, those playoff runs take a lot out of guys He's been to the cup finals three times. He's won a Stanley cup. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's to me, he's a first ballot hall of famer. Um, he's really grown as, as, as a player. And you could just see how emotional he was uh, before the game last night. And he kind of talked about how he was trying to make sure he was present and, and appreciative, but also focusing on the game. Um, he's had some of the greatest mentors you could possibly have in a locker room, Johnny. And uh, I just don't see how it's really even a debatable question. Is this guy a Hall of Famer? Because to me, he, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, no questions asked. I completely agree with you. And he has the Olympic gold as well, right? He has the international accolades too. Um, I, I don't know if I want to spark a debate right now, but you know what you just talked about as far as the playoff games counting toward your 1,000 games and toward that legacy, I, I completely agree with too. And this might be a dumb question, but it kind of made me think like <clears throat> you look at a guy like Jack Eichel, who's been in the league now for almost 10 years, has only been in the playoffs once, won a Stanley Cup, you know, basically dominated in the playoffs. Like was unbelievable. Versus a guy like Brad Marchand, who's played a shit ton of playoff games, has also only won the cup once, but has performed in every base basically every playoff year. Yeah. But their regular seasons, I feel like it's kind of in the same realm, right? But the playoff experience. Well, I disagree. Different. I disagree well, with Michael's much younger still, but but I but listen, he, here's the thing. You're talking about Brad Marchand, who's been a key player on a team that's been in the playoffs every season, probably yeah. other than maybe one since he entered the league. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he's been in the playoffs. Honestly, maybe one year they didn't make the playoffs. Maybe I, I don't even know. I feel like it's been or, or, he, it, or maybe the one year they uh, No, I actually don't think he's ever missed the playoffs. So I don't see uh 14, 15, or 15, 16. So, okay. There, so no then again, one, one or two years of his long career. I, I just think here's the other thing that I really like and appreciate about Marshy. <clears throat> he was not handed anything. This was a guy who was a third round pick who spent just about two full seasons in the American League. He came up to the NHL the year of the cup. He played 20 games the year before. Um, and kind of struggled, got called up, got sent back down, got brought up at the end of the year. And then he goes in in 2010, 2011. He makes the team as the 13th forward. That's where he was sort of penciled in. And he he, he pushes Danny Paye out of the lineup to start the season. Danny Paye played on a line with Sean Thornton uh, and Greg Campbell. That was sort of famously known as the Merlot line. Um, they, they were incredible that year. Uh, for the Bruins and especially during during the playoff run that year I had a front row seat to it um, mm -hmm. but Marshy was on the fourth line for the first 25 games of the year getting limited opportunity limited no power play time just handed nothing and and he played for a coach in Claude Julian who was a guy that you had to earn every inch of his trust he gave you no trust Tyler Sagan had no trust with 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 him um, you know, Adam McQuaid, a guy who endeared himself eventually. I mean, the Claude made you work for it. You know, he really did. And Marshy, 
did it the hard way, ran his way through the fourth line, got an opportunity on the third line. At times throughout that season, the second half, he might get a little sniff on the second line, maybe the second power play, but barely, barely. And then he kind of finds his home, you know, on that second slash third line, but mostly the third line through the cup. And he was just able to make things happen with limited opportunities. And now players always say, I need more power play time. I need more opportunity where yeah. Marshy got none of it and made it happen for himself. And I can think back to like my first, like, holy shit moment with Brad Marchand. We were practicing um, a couple days. We had a couple of days in Vancouver. There was a lot of two days between games in that stent in that game, you know, that, that Stanley cup final, because the travel was Vancouver, Boston. And we were practicing at some offsite facility one day. It was very limited participation, basically like the fourth line, the third line, one or two of the defensemen, and then us, the healthy scratches. At that point, there were maybe four or five healthy scratches that were kind of traveling with the team. Um, you know, not many, there was a group of guys still back in Boston as well, although they might've been kind of dismissed at that point. I can't exactly remember, but, um, so we get, we get a little skate in and then we play three on three at the end of practice, which is something we basically did every day just to keep it fun, conditioning, whatever for, for the guys who didn't play Tuka Rask was always our goalie because he was the backup that year. Yeah. So Tuka and, and Anton Hudobin, and we play three on three and, um, Marshy, his skill set in that three on three game was like a holy shit moment for me because I didn't know a skilled Brad Marchand. I didn't see him or know anything about this guy from the queue. Okay. I never played against him in me. I didn't play major junior, you know, social media was brand new at the time. It's not like we were all connected with guys. Instagram hadn't even come out. I don't think, you know, yeah. Twitter was barely new. And I remember this because I remember during that playoff run in 11, Marshy made a comment about Max Pacioretty and, or, or, you know, and then Pacioretty made a comment about Marshy's nose on Twitter. And the Bruins were like, everybody gets off Twitter. So like I had a Twitter <laughs> account, they made us delete it. Marshy had one, he had to delete it. No one else had it, but the skill level that he had in that three on three game. And I was just like, wow. Like, this is insane how good this guy's hands are. His stick is really long. He plays with a long stick. Um, and so his ability to control the puck in close to his body in a little tight zone three-on-three -three game, I just remember being blown away and being like, whoa, he's different than everybody else out on the ice right now. You know, I mean, and, and Jordan Caron was out on the ice with us, first-round pick. You know, he probably played 100, 150 games in the NHL. Matt Barkowski was out there. Same thing. Trent Whitfield, a couple hundred games in the NHL. So it's not like I was surrounded by guys who weren't NHL players or at least had nice little, you know, cups of coffee in the league. But Marshy just mm. was so different. Even than Tyler Sagan. Like, Sags was obviously high-flying and full of skills. But, like, Marshy's ability in tight with the puck was just, like, I can remember it to the point where I can still visualize some of that skate um, because it, it was like, whoa, it was one of those moments for me where I was like, geez, these guys are good. Like I, I'm not, I don't have that skill. I can't do that. And he's maintained that now for over a decade, right? Like his first playoff run was his rookie year, that 2011 cup run. The guy has 11 goals in a rookie playoff run. Like that's incredible. And then not only has he, you know, continued to progress in that, but he's performed in the playoffs every single year. And that's a debate that everyone that watches hockey has. This guy does in the regular season, but he can't get it done in the playoffs. Brad Marsh, you know, in the regular season and the playoffs now for over a decade, which is insane. And, you know, my earliest memories, I, don't, I never played with him or met him or anything, but you know, that 2011 Stanley cup final where he scores that shorthanded goal. I think he like did a bank pass to himself off the boards, then outweights Roberto Luongo and kind of roofs at high blocker side. That goal was so sick. I, I think it was maybe in, you know, game three, four, or six. It was one of the home games in Boston. And then, um, you know, I think in game six, he opens the scoring up too to, to force a game seven. He comes down the near side, goes against the or, or short side shelf, like on his off wing. Um, that shot was ridiculous. But yeah, Brad Marchand, I mean, whether you love him or hate him, I know he has been one of the most hated guys in the NHL, you know, during a couple of years of his career. But, uh, you know, growing up watching him, I, I always loved him. And he's always a guy I think everybody would want on their team. And even off the ice, everybody, everybody, yeah, 
and and even off the ice, Colby, you, you've probably seen it firsthand, like what he's done in the community in Boston. Oh, he's a, um, he's listen. Yeah. He's a he's a great A person. He's unbelievable in the locker room. He's learned from the best. Um, he he's been a leader in Boston for a long time, and you know, seeing how he's kind of cleaned up the antics and realized situational awareness because he still knows when he needs to drag his team into a game and do something, but his situational awareness has become as good as he is as a hockey player. So mm -hmm. um, I want to address one other thing, actually, that I see in the chat right now from yesterday, and it's being brought back up into the chat. And <clears throat> there were some people who were upset about my takes on the Canadian Hockey League yesterday. And actually a friend of mine, Guy Fleming, who's a broadcaster out in the well in the Western League, reached out to me as well um, to tell me he thinks that we agree on more things than we don't. But he felt like my characterization of the fact that the guys don't really go to school um, and the bus rides and this and that were a little bit unfair. And we had some people yesterday in the chat that said they were never going to listen to our show again because I hurt their little feelings about the Canadian Hockey League. And look, here's the reality. I didn't play in the Canadian Hockey League. Um, so anything that I'm saying to you is secondhand that I've gotten from the hundreds and hundreds of teammates that I've played with who played in various leagues of the CHL, whether it's the Q, the O, or the Dub. Now, <clears throat> I, I could be completely wrong, and now they all go to high school and this and that, and, and whatever. And listen, that that's great. Um, I'm, I'm glad that that happens. And, and as far as my comments about the food and, and the development aspect of it, I 1 million percent stand by the fact that playing three and threes and taking long bus rides, which are more in the Q and the dub than the OHL, are not good for player development. I also stand by the fact that eating Subway or pizza after a game are not good for player development. Now, there are certain teams, and this is why Guy reached out to me, because he works around the Edmonton Oil Kings, and he started telling me about um, how, how they're treated. It, it's the same owners as the Oilers, and he said there's catered meals and nutrition is on the forefront. Yeah, they have long, crazy bus rides, but they look after these types of things, um, which is great. And, and hopefully all the teams are going to get to that point. But every player that I ever talked to and played with from the OHL, kids I trained with in the summer, um, older pros, younger pros, they all said, you know, they, they didn't go to any high school. A lot of them didn't even graduate from high school. Um, so they wouldn't have been able to at 18 go play in the, in, in the NCAA. And I'm not saying the hockey is not good in the CHL. I, I, I never once did I say that. It's the Canadian Hockey League. It's produced NHLer after NHLer, um, you know, year in and year out. But the reality is it's a younger league. You've got these young star players and you see these kids once they get drafted and they're 18 years old and they have 150 points in 75 games or whatever. It's not, it, it, it's not, that's not good for a player's development to score 175 points. It's also not good for Kevin Korchinski to score a, a ridiculous amounts of points as a defenseman and then have to be forced to go to the NHL, even though he needs that intermediate step of maybe the American League, but there's no agreement and the rules are the way that they are. So I certainly stand by the fact that I think the CHL and the NCAA need to sit down at the table and they need to be mediated by the NHL and they need to come up with something that works for everybody. But, you know, I'm sorry if I offended people, but all I'm telling you is that this is what players who played in those leagues have told me. I never played in those leagues. So I'm only going off of secondhand knowledge and secondhand information from guys who have taken that route. So if things have gotten better and they've changed, Great. All things evolve. All things get better. But I guarantee you most of these teams, when they go play a road game and then they have a bus ride, they're getting pizza or they're getting Subway or dog shit food. And here's what, what else? It's the same way in the AHL. It's why I said the same thing about the American Hockey League, that I don't think that that's a true development league like it's billed. Because if it was a true development league, they wouldn't play 76 games, they wouldn't play three and threes, and they wouldn't feed players dog shit food before getting on and off buses for professional hockey games. So again, 
I'm not saying that's like that for every team in the CHL and every league or whatever. I'm just telling you, this is what all the guys and my former teammates have told me about their experiences in the CHL. So that that that's the reality. You could say that I have a lack of knowledge about the CHL, but all I'm telling you is I played with hundreds of guys in my pro career. I played on multiple teams in the American League that were a lot of those were heavy CHL teams, heavy, heavy CHL teams. But ask yourself this. Why did Adam, Adam Fantilli go the NCAA route? He was the best prospect, you know, other than Bedard. He, he decided to go there this year. The best Canadian prospect in hockey, maybe the best prospect outside of the NHL in the world is playing college hockey. OK, so uh, why? Why is that happening? He decided 35 games was good enough for him. Okay. There's something about the development and that development path that a lot of people are starting to key on. Okay. Nutrition, strength and conditioning, recovery, all these things that we're learning about sports science. So that that's it. And, and, and I appreciate the comments. You don't have to agree with me. Um, you know, but Seeing people write, oh, you don't know about the CHL. I'm never listening to your show again is pretty ridiculous. If you don't like it, then don't listen. Then then don't listen. You don't have to agree with me, but don't listen then. I mean, like, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Well, I said yesterday we should just get someone on from the CHL who can kind of go back and forth well, with I, us, which I still think we should do. I think we definitely should. Guy, yeah. Guy Fleming would be a great guest, yeah. but I'd love to get players. I'd love to get some some CHL players and ask him about it. Um, and, and I don't really know any of the real young guys now, but mm. you know, we could ask Rob shrimp to come on. He he'd come on in a heartbeat and talk about his time in London. Cause he loved it. He did again. I'm not saying that it's not good hockey. Of course it's good hockey, but it's a younger league. You, the, the max age is 20 in college guys are 25, 26 years old. So like, I, I you know, it it's, wasn't. Wasn't the narrative on the show two weeks ago when I when I kind of like shit on Winnipeg and and uh, the Oilers winning streak that I hated Canada? Looks like the the tide has turned a little bit. I I you you're saying <laughs> I hate Canada? I don't hate Canada. I I'm just, just make I'm, joke. I'm addressing I'm some joke. sensitivity from from yesterday's show and when you know I I watched our show back and I saw some of the comments and and there were people that were very upset. Um, about it. And like I said, Guy Fleming reached out to me and, and shed some really good light and some really good information to me about how they do it out with the Edmonton Oil Kings and, and just how first class that's all run out there. And, you know, that's that's great. It's 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 awesome. I don't believe for one second that you rub people the wrong way. I rub everybody the wrong <laughs> way. I'm just messing, but the list is uh, too long to keep track of. I I feel like I haven't even said a word on the show today. You've just been firing off, dude. Go You're ahead. buzzing today. I'll, it's Val I'll go get no, a it's coffee. Valentine's Day. Go ahead. It's I'll Valentine's go get a coffee. Day. No, no, you're good. But just uh, wait till I start talking about your your girl. Just wait. I do think Matt Murley is ready to go. So let's welcome in former pro hockey player, current member of the Spit and Chick. What do you mean, screw. former pro hockey player? The guy played, the guy in, the played in the NHL. NHL. Give him his Give fucking him his due, fucking would you? Would Jesus. You? Well, well, I was reading his Twitter bio. It says ex former, former pro hockey, pro hockey player Merles. He doesn't even leave with the NHL. What kind of disrespect is I that? I was looking at his Twitter bio. <laughs> I only had a cup of coffee there, so you still played in the NHL, counts. Merles. Yeah. Okay, you still and you were you played at the wrong time. If yeah. you were coming up now, you'd you'd have a thousand games like Marshy. Yeah, I would have played the one year of college, and then I would have held the team over over my knee and said, "Give me his contract or." I would have got. I would have done what. Uh, what's his name? Just did and got Goche. <laughs> so, what was that? What was Bro, his are name? you live from Atlanta right Coke now? Are you, uh, you know, touring yeah. the studio and doing everything today? What's what's today looking yeah, like for you guys? Uh, I'm down in Atlanta. So yeah, to answer your guys' question earlier, I'll be part of the broadcast or the alt cast tonight. Uh, I'll be on the side. Me and Army will be popping in. They got a bunch of other guests coming on, but the main show will be RA. Biz, of course, and Wit sitting on the couch doing all sorts of antics, and they got a huge night planned for us. It's going to be awesome. So, can you explain a little bit more? Because I think you know, I, I'm definitely confused in how it's working. I'm sure there are others as well. Is there still the panel, and then it pans to you guys, or it's it's a totally separate thing to watch from the TNT typical broadcast? 
Yeah, totally separate thing. There, I think there will be a little interaction between everybody, but TNT will have their normal full game with Edzo and um, I don't know who else. I just know Edzo's on the call. <laughs> and then my old he's coach. The only, he, He's the alpha male on that call anyway, so he he he's the only one that uh, that that matters, right? Yeah. So they have their normal thing, and then in the in the panel, it's Army and AC and Henrik and Liam, of course, and and that's on TNT. And then our sh our thing will be totally different. It's on True TV. It's on Max if you're streaming. And if you ever seen Chicklets before, we've done these like Barstool does them all the time, like kind of like a watch party almost mm -hmm. where we're sitting there on the couch. We're talking about the plays as, as we see them, blah, blah, blah. But normally it's hard to sync it up. So this is going to be perfect. We're going to be right on there. I, th I think there's going to be the game is going to be on one screen. And then you have the three Chicklets guys just talking and breaking down the plays, what they see. As far as me, I might be throwing in some live bets <laughs> yeah. down to the guys and and stuff like that. If something's buzzing, if Witt sees a guy buzzing, I'm, he's getting Merles. What's the live odds on him to score? So I'll be right there to give him that. So stuff like that and tons more planned that I'm not at liberty to talk about mm -hmm. yet. Merles, I gotta ask you though, is is um have you met Shaq and 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 Charles? Do you know if they're gonna be around tonight? Because man, those guys kill me. They're so good together on TV. Yeah, I haven't seen them here. I don't know if they're around. I think is it NBA All Star game coming up soon? Maybe it's coming so up this weekend, I believe. Yeah, yeah but so I don't know tonight's NBA and games. ESPN. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I, I haven't seen them, but like you said, I I didn't get all the information and all the surprises. So you never know. I'm curious too, Merle, just with, with this whole production, you know, everyone talks about preparation and whatnot. How do you, how do you prepare for something like this when, you know, your show that you're doing tonight is basically just live reaction. Like, is there a way to prep or it's kind of just go with the flow? Uh, I usually have one or two stories in the back of my head, ready to go in case all things fail. But, it, just like our live shows, if you ever been to one of those, when you have Biz and Wit up there, you don't really have to be prepared much. They they can just go. <laughs> you just wind them up and just follow their lead. And and a lot of times in these, when we've done these parties where we're we're kind of like sitting on the couch watching the game, it, it's it's totally unscripted. And just as the plays go, it reminds you of a story, and then that story reminds you of another story. And, and then you get a little argument way you guys are breaking down a penalty or a way a goal was scored. So it's, uh, it's pretty easy to prepare. You just, you just gotta be yourself. And what's army doing? Just running back and forth from the panel to the show army. Yeah. He he'll be, he'll be, he'll be getting a workout in tonight, which he needs. So, uh, <laughs> he'll be doing the intermissions for TNT. And then I think he's going to pop over for at least one period to watch with us. So, that, so guy, that guy is everywhere. He's got more I was just than say. you, Johnny. <laughs> he's he's pit, doing Pittsburgh color. He's doing hockey night in Canada. He's doing the TNT panel. Every now and again, they throw him down, you know, with TNT in game. It's and game it's, notes. I mean, listen, he's got game notes, and then he helps with all the interviews on regular chicklets. He's the guy. I don't know how he does it. He doesn't stop. It's his world, and <laughs> and you know the amount of times people text me like, "Oh, when did you start doing TNT games?" And I'm just like, "No, that's the successful. <laughs> um, that's the one who had the longer career and is now having the better broadcasting career." So you got us, uh, you got us confused on that. When when did you come stateside, Merles? You you're man, you must be a regular on those those cross continental flights, huh? Yeah, I'm starting to recognize the stewardesses and stewards and stuff like that. I'm like, oh yeah, I know that. I know that one. I don't think we call them that anymore, by the yeah, way. Flight attendants. I, I, I think that's frowned upon, which is which is. I I do that too, by the way, and then I get corrected by my wife when I'm like, oh, yeah. can you get the stewardess? And they're like, yeah, we don't say that anymore. Flight attendants. <laughs> the flight attendants. I'm recognizing. Um, I came over for the All Star game, so I was in Toronto for that week, which was absolute mayhem. And funny thing is, I I thought I was done. I thought I was out of the out of the the vortex there. And I'm walking through the airport on Sunday <laughs> night, just minding my own business, licking my wounds, and I run into Johnny. So had to slug down a couple more beers and have another poutine before we left Canada. So mm -hmm. that was a tough trip, but that was a lot of fun up there.
Yeah, and it was nice to to close out the trip with a couple of beers at Merle's. I think we sat at that bar for like two hours. I heard a lot of funny stories uh, from his college days. I don't know if you want to share them on here, but uh, we were kind of comparing like we were kind of comparing like gambling stories from our college experiences yeah. and stuff. And it was it was pretty funny to hear what those guys were doing, you know, in their time and what you know I was doing in my time in college. But um, you know, it's also really cool just to hear Merle's like your whole transition into media. Like, you know, Chicklet's kind of. Uh, I don't want to say it fell in your lap, but it was something that you never really expected. I mean, you told me you were thinking about getting into coaching and then this whole thing took off. I don't know if you want to kind of touch on that. I don't know if people really yeah. know that background. Yeah, I can try to do it quickly. I was out coaching a youth hockey team in Rochester, New York, and it, it was going well. I didn't mind it. It wasn't uh, the parents were a little tough, as you guys all know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Chicklets started getting because uh, Barstool got bought by the gambling company. So they need a little more gambling content. And those guys are kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't, I, you know, Biz, like, I don't really know much about gambling. Wit's like, I know a guy. I know a guy that knows how to gamble. <laughs> he doesn't, he's not great with the internet. As my picture's terrible. But he's like, oh, I know a guy, Merle's, that's pretty good at all that. And he taught me how to gamble. So he asked, do you want to just start writing some blogs each night on a NHL pick? So started doing that. And it was going all right. Like, just nothing crazy. But then one morning, I decided to tweet a game from Finland on my Twitter, which had maybe 2000 followers and that game won eight, nothing, I think. And the few followers I had that bet it went nuts. So <laughs> that night there was a little more people following my NHL blog there for chicklets after that win. So the next morning I woke up, maybe I had a, you know, a few more followers and everybody give me, give us another Euro pick. A lot of these people never understood about European hockey that it even existed or that you could even bet on it. So they went crazy for it. I, I picked another game. It, they won six to one or something. It was wild. That doesn't normally happen. And it just got really lucky and it kind of just kept snowballing from there. And uh, yeah, it just, it just keeps snowballing, I guess. But I think so, I introduced European hockey to a lot of people and, and that's been fun during the work day to get them through their work day. <laughs> what, what was the, yeah. what was the place that, you know, cause you know, as Johnny didn't want to give you credit for being an NHL and I did, but <laughs> What was your favorite stop in Europe? Because I know you 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 bounced around a little bit um, and and tore some of those leagues apart. Yeah, they were all great. Sweden was the easiest because of all the English they spoke there and just the normality of the food and the people. It was really good. Obviously, I still go back and live there most of the year. But at one place we stopped was in Zagreb, Croatia, and we were part of the KHL. It was a new team, so we could have yeah, twenty five North Americans. So it was it was awesome. It was all older guys like myself who who kind of bounced around Europe or guys that were done in the AHL. They so we all were in the same boat there. Twenty five guys, twenty five wives and girlfriends that all got it, and we just wasn't had an Cam Barker team. on that. Was Cam Barker on that team with you? No, I played with him the next year, and uh, when I went to Bratislava. Oh, uh, because I was going to say, because I had a quick little crossover with him in Bratislava when it was the end for me. But you you had already been gone. Yeah, I already got kicked out of there for fighting the coach, but he was he was worried about my plus minus in the preseason against the Czech teams. And I said, I'm not here to play against the Czech teams. I, I might have called them beer league teams and uh, he didn't take to that too well. So I was asked well, to leave there. Johnny, my first Merle's memory was when I was playing in Syracuse and in, in the I was a sophomore in high school. I was playing for the Ontario Provincial League and Merle's is a Syracuse stars legend. And so. <laughs> He was playing for, I want to say, Wilkes-Barre at the time. With Was yeah, it Wilkes-Barre? And he gets a penalty shot. And I'm pretty sure it was his birthday. And we had the <laughs> same coach in Syracuse. So the coach took myself and Ryan Hayes, another Syracuse kid, to go watch Merle's play. And he's like, I'll introduce you to him and Tim Connolly and whatever. And Merle's gets a penalty shot. He absolutely undresses the goalie, but he doesn't bury it on the penalty <laughs> shot on his birthday. And we were just Thanks. like, oh, my God. Like <laughs> You can just see the skill, though. Like, the skill was just – that's why I always say about Merle's wrong era, like mm. total wrong era the way Merle's played. It was full of skill, but coaches were probably looking for sandpaper, which just wasn't your thing, Merle's. Yeah, I just I, – I never could pull it off in the NHL. I would get called up or I'd make the team and I would start on the fourth or third line, and I just never adapted to playing seven, eight minutes. I couldn't figure out how to do that. Once in a while, I would get the 16, 17 minutes with some better players, and then it would be a little more successful. But 
I just I, I wasn't a guy that can do it on my own. I need help, so I I need to be on the second third line. In those days, the fourth line it was me and two fighters. You know, we weren't getting <laughs> especially a lot in the done. American League. Zoo. Yeah, so. You're where jumping you, the bucket on a three on two. <laughs> where in your pro career did you link up with Wit? Like, how did you guys know each other? Because Wit's obviously a mass guy through and through, and you're an you know an, an upstate New Yorker, a Sar you know Syracuse, all that stuff. So how did you guys link up? Yeah, it ties back into the gambling, I guess. So <laughs> we were in Wilkesbury and we we're going on a big playoff run. His junior year of college ended. So we brought him to Wilkesbury to be with us for the playoff run. So we were in Bridgeport, which so he drove he just drove down from BU and beautiful our bus Bridgeport. Oh, brutal. So they, they used to tell <laughs> us we weren't allowed to leave the hotel. Like you weren't allowed to go to dinner outside Bridgeport. So what we used to do was go to Mohegan Sun to go to Michael Jordan Steakhouse. It was probably an hour, hour and a half ride. So our bus pulls up and all we're thinking about is throwing the bags getting a taxi and going to Mohegan. Mm -hmm. As we pull up, Whitney pulls up in a Ford Explorer. Like, oh, hey, how you doing? We're like, I heard you have a truck. And he's like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, you heard you have a truck. We're going to Mohegan for dinner. You're driving. <laughs> so a bunch of us get in his truck and go. And of course we hit the tables after we end up coming back missing curfew. So his his very first pro game, he's late for curfew, but luckily we snuck in. Terrian never found out. I was just and gonna say, was it Michelle Terrian? Okay, so yeah. there you go. But we got away with it and uh we went on a great playoff run that year. We uh we went all the way to Calder Cup finals with him. We had we had I gotta time. ask you, Merles, if you told yourself at, at that time that you'd be doing what you're doing now, like what the hell would he responded. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, wow, that's a dream job. He's you tour around, you drink pink Whitney and, and you make <laughs> sports bets. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. So me and Whit were roommates the uh, next year. We were his lockout year in Wilkesbury. So we, we got along that whole playoff ride. And then in playoffs or in a training camp, they roomed us together by accident and we had a great time. So we were roommates that whole year. Then we were roommates the next year in Pittsburgh and it's history since then. Yeah, it's it's been unreal to watch you guys yeah. grow. And you said yeah. you started with two thousand followers, you're almost at ninety thousand right now. So it's been a pretty quick climb. But he's the opposite Merles, of you when it comes to betting, Johnny. You'll make money <laughs> if you follow Merle's the the opposite. Yeah. When you when you see Johnny put his picks out, the best thing you could ever do is go the other way with it. Yeah. That's how to make money on his picks. Yeah, that's fine too. I tell people that all the time. I tell all the yeah. trolls in there, like you don't like it, then fade me. That's fine too. And what when you start seeing those green check marks, that's when you jump on board and you do what you want with them. How long can I say it's a cold streak before I just have to say that I actually suck at it? <laughs> like how much more, how much more leeway do I have here? Um, but Merles, I know you're also in town through the weekend. You guys got a lot mm -hmm. of stuff going on with the stadium series. Uh, yeah. Anything that you can talk about that you guys have planned for that? I mean, I'm, I'm super pumped for that game Saturday and Sunday Jonas brothers concert Saturday night. You're going to be front row with that or what? <laughs> oh, no, that's not my thing, but yeah, we got, we all have game notes Friday, 1 PM. Right from there, we'll go over to Hoboken. We have a meet and greet at Hoboken. I think it's Texas, Arizona bar. You probably know better than me. It's the bar right there in the corner in Hoboken. Yeah. For all you young kids that hang out. Only been so once. We're gonna, we'll, be, we'll be dummying some Pink Whitney there. And that's. I think that's it for Friday. We get just to hang out. And then the game on Saturday, we'll be over tailgating early for that. And the game on Sunday. And I fly back to Sweden on Monday. So oh, wow. A, busy, busy weekend trip. for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, been, yeah. it's been busy last weekend. I, I don't know if you saw it, but I was back at RPI. Yeah. I did see that. Yeah. Well, so I was alumni weekend. It was wild. So it started off Friday night. I had to go to the game Friday night. My nephew was the engineer of the game. So he had to take warm ups with, or he gets to take warm ups with the, with the kids. So I'm at that game with my family wake up the next day we had meetings with ad meetings with the president meetings with the coach meetings with the players then it's alumni game after that i ran over to another rink my nephew's playoff game come back i was in the president's suite i'm on the ice i did uh i did colby i did your job i did the second period on espn plus with coach friggin <laughs> for the game i did the color i did the lineup read so i was just gonna was, say was, the lineup the the yeah. that was a, a great video because look you guys the spit and chicklets guys are two two young hockey players. I mean, you guys are cooler than than the Hall of Famers. <laughs> like you guys are literally have become the 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 top of the A list celebrities to these young hockey players. And 
you know, for you to go in and read the lineup before a college game, those guys look like they were ready to go through an absolute wall. Um, that was a, that was a great video. Do you do you like doing that kind of stuff? Like, are you finally? Because I remember at the Frozen Four last year, you were like, "I gotta get, I gotta get loosened up. I gotta liquor up a little bit. I gotta look." <laughs> now you just look like such a natural at it. Well, I might have been liquored up for that read too, <laughs> but um, I had a little bit of time to prepare. They told me in, in the afternoon, so I, I did a little research, and it kind of was just worked out that. The one kid had a brother on the team, so that that was an easy joke. The one guy's dad played in the NHL, and I already had the Watson kid, the Watson gloves. So I kind of already had something on all the kids, and it just made it easy. And, yeah, you just kind of, like, black out during it and just yeah. just go through your routine. But, yeah, that was really fun. Program's a little slow right now, but we're, we're trying to turn it around, and that it was a good one for uh, – for everybody to get back. And, and it, I think it's it really going to help. And next well, year we'll see a better turnout and you, stuff. You, you guys certainly have the power to, you know, put major marketing and, and all that stuff behind. I mean, every video you guys have done for Chicklets university. And I know yeah, Cornell awesome. kind of like leads that charge a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Every video I go, wow, that was the best one I've ever seen. And then the next one comes out and I go, that's the best one I've ever seen. And I mean, I've been kicking and screaming for BU to do it and, you know, just bullshit going on there where, where, you know, they, they're not getting on board with it, but it, it's, it's so cool what you guys are doing for college hockey. I mean, obviously last year we hung out quite a bit at the frozen four. Mm -hmm. I, th I think I heard that the whole crew is coming this year to the frozen four, which I think would be unbelievable. We could have big blue blood um, schools at the frozen four this year, which would be awesome. Um, so yeah, you, you guys have the power. So I, I feel like if you guys get, get a little behind RPI, you guys will get them, you know, get their level and their recruiting elevated for sure. Yeah, I, I think next year we'll we'll try to maybe do that whole weekend as the Chicklets U because you can get you can get behind the scenes on everything the alumni the rank you know obviously the rank isn't up to the standards of a Penn State or or yeah. something like that so it's hard to compare with those but there's still great things there it's still it's still a rock and barn when that place is buzzing and I mean the the, the education is is top notch so it's a great spot like all of us alumni we all say it changed our lives is the best place but little slow right now, but we'll get it turned around. Do you, Did any of the guys keep... on the team? Can I, can I ask one? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Go. Did any of the guys on the team, like, you know, kind of leave the locker room to chat it up with you in between periods? Because I remember we played ASU when I was at Mercyhurst and Biz was like at the game and half of our fucking team left the locker room in between periods to go talk to him. Like our coach came in. And he's like, where is everybody? And like half of the sophomore class was outside talking to Biz. No, uh, we got, we got to talk to them before the game. So we, we talked to a few guys before that, and then they, they invited us to the after party. So <laughs> we said, all right, let's stay focused. Let's get a win and, and we'll go to the after party and we we can talk it up there. But that, that was a little weird. Got there and it's Merle's Merle's and they're giving us red cups out of a keg. I said, oh, geez, I'm way too old for this. We're out of here. Merle's who, who who's the head coach at RPI now? Uh, Dave Smith. Gotcha. Been there probably five, six years, I want to say. From yeah. Canisius, right? Canisius, yeah. I, 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 the guy I have my eye on for that program is Kirk McDonald. Ooh. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know Dave Smith. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I haven't broadcast an RPI mm -hmm. game ever. I've never, they've never been on my schedule and haven't had them in the tournament at all. I know they haven't really ha been there in a in 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 a minute. Um, but Kirk McDonald was a former teammate of mine who funny enough didn't get along with him at all back then when we were teammates because he was just he was such a hard like he was just this hard-nosed player and I was just so soft and so <laughs> young and like I, it took me time like he would just take runs at me in practice and he was just like always hacking and what because he just played the game like nails like yeah. m Kirk nails and then you know as we got older i started to appreciate how he was as a teammate when i was that age and now he's doing an unbelievable job in the ushl as a head coach i know he coached pro he was the reading royal coach he was the reading royal assistant coach and he's an r you know he's an rpi alum and i just know the energy and the way that that guy can kind of galvanize human beings so 
I'm I'm kind of hoping to see that play out at some point where he gets an opportunity to go back there and be the head coach and potentially kind of re jumpstart that program. I'm not asking you to comment on that because I know you're you're involved with those guys. I just I know Kirk is a great alumni who's doing great things in the USHL. And you know, I, I went to a coaches convention this past summer that John Riley, um, who's like a local guy, you know, he's a scout for for Tampa now. He's been with Flyers, Atlantic District, USA Hockey, whatever. He put this cool coaches convention on. And it was just great to connect with Kirk and just see, like, he's a brilliant hockey mind, like brilliant hockey mind. So you don't need a comment. Johnny, no, you I can guess, fill yeah. in here on the back Matt, end. Macker's, not, love no, Kirk. a good friend of mine. He's, uh, hey, he did the same thing Benny Barr did. He lived on my couch in my house when uh, he was a volunteer assistant at RPI, just like Benny did. And he's moved on. And like you said, he was an intense player. Oh. He, beat can he beat cancer during college and loses all his weight, comes yep. all the way back and leads that team. Nails. And he was just a warrior to play. I think he won. Did he win the East Coast League Cup? I don't know if he won the Calder Cup or he lost somewhere, but he would. He's always there. He's yeah. He's nuts. And we didn't we didn't win a Calder Cup together no. in Providence. We had some good runs, but like honestly, nobody played harder every shift and every drill than him. Nobody that I ever played with or against. Like really? literally, he stands alone in that category of nails. Like yeah. I could just see him putting a thing of freaking nails in his mouth. Like he was. <laughs> scary, scary, tough t levels of toughness. And like you said, you know, dealt with cancer, came back from it. Great inspirational story that you can look up. His name's Kirk McDonald. Um, but I just hopefully at some point we see him back there because I think he could do great things. And he, he's coming under that whole like we had at RPI. We had Seth Appert was the head coach. Jim Montgomery was the assistant. And then Benny was a volunteer assistant. When Benny left, Kirk came in there. He was volunteer. So it's that same tree of great coaching. You know, Apps is in Rochester AHL now. We all know where Monty is. And where Mac is now is actually where Monty went out to, too. Dubuque. Is it Dubuque, right? Yep. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you get so GM and coach out there. You really learn a lot. So. Merles, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Oh. Uh, you know, we appreciate you being here on such a busy day, but. You know, I do got to ask, since it is Valentine's Day, which one of the spit, uh, spit and chicklets crew is the biggest hardo on Valentine's Day? I woke up and saw G already had like three stories posted on Instagram. Oh, really? Valentine's oh, Day. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, did the, I did the flower delivery back home since I'm not uh -huh. there for my wife and my daughter. So that, that was a good move. I already did the phone call. That's why this show was great. <laughs> got me up early, moving around, got the phone call to them. Flowers weren't delivered yet, though, so that's a little bit of a panic. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I don't know what Biz, who knows what Biz has going. He's probably like you, Johnny. He's going to have four different dates going today. That's right. I got nothing, Johnny, man. I'm watching you guys 5 tonight. 5 p.m., 7.30 p.m., yeah. 9 p.m. Johnny's got backups for his backups. I'm watching yep. you guys tonight. Yeah, That's get them all watching the all cast tonight. 7.30, yeah. True TV, and streaming on Max. I'm starting uh, to think that was planned on purpose that you guys were doing this on Valentine's Day just to get away from everybody and have the night for the boys. <laughs> that, Look, I'm crazy. highly intrigued by it. Honestly, like I'm I'm going to be <clears throat> watching for sure just just because it's different and it's a cool opportunity to see something new and these these good personalities, you know, talk about the game. So, um I I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Like I think the Manning cast kind of paved the way for different um and, and you know, th those guys have done such a great job. So hopefully this this works really well and it becomes a thing. I know the Blackhawks have tried this with with John Scott and Charlie Romiliotis in Chicago, and it's it's kind of hard to watch. Um, those, you know, I don't know John Scott. I know Charlie is a great guy, but it's 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 not, you know, it's not very appetizing. But I have a feeling the Chicklets one will be really good. Anything with Biz works, so he, he's going to be an absolute character. I'm going to be laughing at him the whole time, so I know it's going to be good. And with the with the production team that's here, we we did a Unreal. bunch of stuff yesterday. Yeah. It's I mean, you can't get more professional. So it, it's going to be. I think it's going to be a home run. Yeah, Biz is definitely awesome. the. Biz is definitely the straw that stares the drink. I mean, when he look, when there's a week when he's not on TNT's Wednesday night panel, which doesn't happen often, that show is it's not half as good and it's not like the other guys don't do a good job but he just his energy and just the way he stirs everything up like it's just it it changed in my opinion hockey broadcasting and what other networks and people are trying to do 
Um, I honestly like, and, and I think a lot of that, the, the pod gets a lot of the credit for that, but what he does on, on TNT on Wednesday nights, like my wife who, who has learned hockey and likes watching hockey, like she'll sit down and watch the pregame show because like he entertains the shit out of us. We laugh. It's, yeah, and, it's yeah, they talk about it's, hockey. It, it's, it's not because of Hank. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not because of Hank. I mean, listen, we know Hank is a stud, but he's not on it enough to say it's because of Hank. Um, he's just, the guy, the guy is just, he's the, he's the, he's the starer, man. And, and it's, it's unbelievable what he's done. It really is. It's, it's, uh, I'm glad it hasn't, you know, cause you know, all the people out there that, you know, the writers and the, this and the, that, that have a problem with him and they have a problem with Barstool. I'm just glad TNT was able to say, we don't care what you think and stand up to that because this guy is great for hockey. Any way you look at it, any way you look at it. He's he's the bet, and when we when we're around these towns or in these meet and greets, he he talks to every single person. He he leaves every person thinking they're a best friend, like which he is, and he's unbelievable. Yeah. He he remembers everybody's names. He cares about everybody. He's really yeah. So Jeremiah respectful. said that in the chat. He said yeah. Biz remembered him, and and yeah, you know crazy. they did. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. Merles, I just got one last question for you before right. we let you go. If you had to put a bet on it, do the Flyers make the playoffs or not? <laughs> oh Jesus. We had this That's made this bet one. yesterday. I was fading them a lot. I finally jumped on them the other night. If you look at, I think that I think they're all right. I think they are going to make it. Is there current odds here? And let me look on DraftKings quickly. Merles, what, as what, you're do you looking, you guys have a bet. Yeah, so we'll give you the background. I all all year Johnny's like doubting them, and honestly, it took me a while to get on board, but probably six weeks ago and they went through that stretch where they beat Colorado, they beat Florida. I said, you know what? I'm on board. And then they went on the losing streak. I mm -hmm. stayed on board. And then Johnny bet me dinner at catch. Okay. Full appetizers, <laughs> drinks, you name it. Okay. Perfect. The whole, the whole nine yards. Crippling um, credit card and, debt. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, they're going to make the playoffs. And he says they're not. He doubled down on social media yesterday, unprompted and said, yeah. I will buy a Flyers jersey for any Flyers fan that retweets this or one Flyers fan random that retweets this if they make the playoffs. That's how sure. So we're talking a $500 dinner and a Flyers jersey to a random fan on social media. He's that confident they're not making the playoffs. Wow. I'm taking that bet all day. Yeah. DraftKings has them right now, minus 170 to make the playoffs, plus 140 no. So that's pretty big. That's pretty good odds. Yeah. Those guys know what they're doing. I'm ballsy. I'm ballsy. You're in trouble. <laughs> but, Merles, we really appreciate your time. And, yeah, uh, you know, wish you the guys. best of luck tonight. We're so excited to watch you. And uh, we know you're going to kill it. So thanks again. Awesome. Thanks for having me, boys. All right, Merles. That was fun. That was, that was a yeah. good time. Always fun. Uh, listen, I'm glad we got the sort of a little more information about it tonight yeah. because, yeah, like all of that was kind of like one of my first thoughts was like, where's Grinnell and like, where's Merle's and like, where's arm dog? Because I feel like those guys are, are, you know, they, they, I like you learn in, in TV, like you need the whole team. Like it, mm -hmm. it's not just the personality, the main personality needs the rest of the group. And so I'm happy that that Merle's filled us in with that information. So we know that the whole group will be involved. It's not just the three guys um, that, that have kind of been on the, the artwork, I guess, of the marketing. So, um, yeah, that'll be, that'll be fun to watch tonight. I'll, I'll, I'm definitely, I'm super intrigued. Like I'm super intrigued. Yeah. I mean, the best thing about them too, is when you do watch them, you kind of feel like you're hanging out with them and it'll be cool to have that with an NHL broadcast. Cause like, I, you know, I've never had that feeling before, you know, like I'm sure you haven't really either, even though you know, you've done the TV side and, and, you know, when you're on the TV side, you're told to bring everyone in, right. Kind of explain the game to people who might not know it. But again, it's not always conversational, whereas this is going to be just genuine conversation. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, they'll play the part a bit. They'll, they'll get the energy going a bit, but again, you're just going to feel like you're on your couch hanging out yeah. with them. And that's what I think. Well, I think really some, good. some broadcasters do it better than others. Some broadcasters yeah. talk at you and some t broadcasters talk to you. And I know those are two different things. You know, when you talk mm -hmm. to someone, it, it feels a little more conversational. When you talk at someone, it feels like you're being lectured. Um, I, I know there's there's different styles for different people. So, you know, it it uh, it should be really cool. Like, I'm, I'm glad we got Merle's on. 
Um, we didn't even really get a chance to ask him if, if uh, it bring him into that first conversation about yeah. Marshy. I would have been been interested to hear if he thinks he's a Hall of Famer or not. Um, I know we didn't really touch on the McDavid six point night last we might have night. I mean, topics for tomorrow. I, yeah. I mean, McDavid has six points. Um, Let's talk uh, about that for a bit. Let's talk about that. I mean, good, he's good. he's now at what? No, go ahead. You're going to give some stats. Go for it. Yeah, Conor McDavid is now at 70, 77 points in 47 games, 21 goals, 56 assists. He's climbed his way up. He's 13 points back in Nikita Kucherov. And honestly, I think he can catch him. Yeah, I mean, listen, when you see him go out and get six points and and not some secondary assists where he wasn't involved in the play, I mean, these were plays that he completely controlled, even on the second assists. He draws so much attention to himself when he starts moving his feet. That um, spin around a pass a cane. Oh, my ridiculous. God. Ridiculous. I mean, listen, every one of them was a little bit better last night, and, and yeah. he was on a mission. And look, he dragged his team into that game because they didn't play a great game, Edmonton. They won, um, but I didn't like the way they managed the puck. You know, Nugent Hopkins ends up with two goals, but bad, man, did he have a couple of bad turnovers that ended up in the back of his net. You know, I think Edmonton needs to tighten it up again. 8-4, it's fine once in a while, but that's not how they're going to win the cup. Like, they need to manage the puck like they did during that 16-game win streak um, and not like they did last night and, and get into these, you know, riverboat games because it's going to be hard to, to get six points a night in the playoffs for McDavid. But look... I am never going to bet against McDavid to do anything because when he goes out and gets six points in a game, I mean, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And there, there were actually a couple of uh, a sixes last night that were monumental numbers in the NHL. You had McDavid six points. You had Andre Kopitar catch a dash six last night oh. for the LA Kings. I didn't That's see that what, game, but that, well, that, uh, that score is ugly. I mean, they, they look like they've packed it in. Their, their yeah. interim head coach, he might be out the door in a week. Um, I hope DJ Smith uh, is only renting in L.A. because that coaching staff doesn't look long for the tooth. How about this? And, and a friend of mine sent this to me, and, and you know he's a statistician and did some research on this. There have only been two other guys in 2021, Victor Hedman and Matt Kierstead were a minus six. And then the, the last time before that, a player was minus six. I texted it to you guys last night. Was it 1997? Um, that guy, M M Mahaloff or whatever his name was. So basically, that's, yeah, that's only happened four times since 1997. A player catches a dash six in a game. And honestly, if I was a better, I would... Andre Kopitar would have been one of the last people I ever would have bet on to be a dash six in a game because he's a guy who's known for being so responsible in his own zone, but seven, nothing lost dash six. I mean, yeah. that is some Mike Commodore gold jacket shit, <laughs> or green jacket shit. If I've ever seen it. That's, that's definitely rough. I, I also love that bit that Mike Commodore does. It's so funny. And I had dinner with Mario Ferraro, who was on it for a good chunk of the first half of the season. And when Mario played the Rangers, I think he was, <clears throat> I think he was plus two that night. So he goes plus two commie suck it. Like, it's so Listen, funny. when you, when you're catching so dashes funny. like that, yeah. you're just, you get a plus one, one night. And it's like, you just had a hat trick because yeah. that's, that stat I was dash nineteen my senior year, dude. It's when brutal. when you <laughs> when when you're catching minuses like that and like you're catching them whether it's your fault or not, it's absolutely the worst thing ever. So, mm -hmm. uh, the other significant number six last night, Johnny, I'm going to hit you with before we wrap up our show today. Ovi with his mm -hmm. sixth straight game with a goal. About a week ago, everyone was like starting to say maybe he's not going to catch Gretzky. He's going to end up with 20, 25 goals this year. He's catching yeah. this record. No doubt he's catching this record. It's There's it's, also no way, like, he retires without it. Like, it's, well, it's, well, listen, his slap shot is never going to get, like, he's not going to lose that. He might not be able to skate. They may be wheeling him out in a wheelchair in a few years, but as long as he can get up on the power play and take that one-timer, he's going to score 15 or 20 goals. Um, so... What was interesting that I heard on NHL Network yesterday, and then I started digging into it a little bit, was that Ovi has tinkered with his sticks this year. Apparently, the CCM stick that he had been using, they could no longer make anymore going into this year. 
So he had to use a little bit of a different stick. And then about a month ago, he switched to a Bauer stick and then he's tinkered with that. And now he's using a Bauer stick. Bless you. Um, you. <laughs> good job with the mute button there. That yeah. was, that was, that was impressive timing. That was like you <laughs> producing yourself there. Way to go. Um, but I can tell you this as Kevin Weeks was talking about it before the game with, um, I don't remember the other analyst he was on with, um, but that would fuck me up big time to change sticks like that, that deep into your career, dude, I still use a synergy when I go on the ice yeah, with you're mentally weak, dude, the New Jersey Titans. <laughs> okay. I literally have this, the old synergy right behind me. I've got a brand new one in the corner over there. And I've got one that's taped up in my garage that I take with me to the rink. I, I mean, having to switch your sick at this point of your career. I mean, that just anything, just the graphics, the way you can feel the most slight difference in your sticks for some guys, some guys. And maybe you were one of these guys I've seen have a power play stick, a five on five stick, a practice stick, a curve mm -hmm. for this, a curve for that. The new one comes out, you try it. I was not like that. I could not change my sticks. I liked what I liked and I got angry when they changed the graphics because I felt like the weight would be different. But I don't know how you were with sticks, but but that shit drove nah. me crazy. In the in the NHL, we were given Easton sticks. Easton was the sponsor for the league, and I literally felt like I couldn't stick handle with an Easton Team stick. Did you so, play for in the NA? The Wichita Falls Warriors. They they're now in Oklahoma City, I think. Uh, they folded since, but um, we were given Easton, and and I I said I was like I I can't use it. Like I can't. What stick did you handle. use? What stick I, did you like? I ended up I ended up you know luckily my parents helped me and they paid they bought me a Bauer stick and I would spray paint over the Bauer side. <laughs> So, you know, I got, I got lucky, but I, you know, I was definitely, uh, you know, I wouldn't say like superstitious or whatever, but I was particular in, in what I liked and what I didn't like, you know, what I hated that a lot of people do like, I'm, I might be, uh, in the unpopular opinion with this one. I hated broken in gloves. I liked having like new stiff gloves. I, are I you, a, are I, you a serial killer? Because I always felt like my shot was behavior. stronger when my gloves were, were stiff. Oh my God. See, that's how sticks were. I, I, yeah, I used to have this thing, and and honestly, Kevin Shattenkirk will still text me and make fun of me about this. I used to say I need a stick with fresh pop. So like <laughs> when I was, I always had needed a new stick for a game. I maybe I would use yeah. it in pregame skate, but then once I uh -huh. used it for one or two games, it would be a practice stick. Um, and mm -hmm. I played with a pretty whippy stick, so they broke down pretty quickly. And those Easton sticks were were fairly yeah. whippy. But were you like that as a kid too? No, as a kid, like, whatever. Oh, my I, dad, we'd I, go to Canada, and my dad would, dude. I used wood sticks as a kid. All right, yeah. I was yeah. I was using wooden sticks until I was yeah. like, what, thirteen years old, probably 12, 13. So Sherwood sure coffee curve. <laughs> no, I I used those Bowers. That was the popular stick. I, I had like a Karaki. white. My my stick was a white Bauer stick, a wooden stick, but it was the white Bauer stick. Um, and that was awesome. And then I remember getting like an Easton Z bubble when I was like maybe like 10 or 11, but it still had a wooden blade. Um, the Easton Z bubble was awesome. The green one know, and then yeah. the silver one. Yeah, this shit's a little little before That's your like time. Mighty Ducks but... kind of shit, right? No, those those were those <laughs> old Easton sticks that were yeah, like yeah. super square. Um but I, I'm an Easton stick guy. That that's that's it. And I still have my Easton sticks. And honestly, when I'm on the ice with the Titans, whether it's the juniors, the U18s, the U16s, or whatever, guys are always coming up to me. And they're like, "Hey, let me let me try that stick for for a drill or whatever." So like they'll mm -hmm. and like I'll hold their new Bauer stick or whatever it is they play with, and I'm like, I don't even feel like I'm holding something in my hands. My stick says 425 grams. Your stick is like 70 grams. Um, yeah, I, so I, I put two sticks on the, um, what the hell on the scale at the airport. And, uh, it was literally a pound for two yeah. hockey sticks. It was a pound. Yeah. It was crazy. So that, that was crazy. So yeah, we'll, we, uh, on for a long time. we didn't, we didn't talk about the, the, the Riley suspension at all today. Um, 
you know, it's I know we, we, we plan to kind of get into that. It's been talked about. It yeah. is what it is. Five is the number everybody kind of expected. I'm glad they didn't give him 10 and make an example out of him. That would have been dumb. Now well, the Leafs might give him 10 after how they played last night and their record without him. <laughs> now, now what they need to do is they need to make that the standard. If you, if you cross check a guy in the face, it's, it's five games. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, today went fast. Merle's was great. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure you watch that tonight. Make sure you watch Chicklets U. Those videos that Grinnell does, Chicklets U, I'm telling you right now, they're so cool. Um, it, it really just highlights how great these these college programs are running things and how they have it. Um, so <laughs> what are you laughing at? They should do CHLU. <laughs> that would be interesting. I, I would want to <laughs> see that. Sorry. I had not I, I would be yet. I, took I, it. I mean I would be interested to see that a little little behind the scenes of of one of those yeah. programs. Um yeah, I, I've done some tours. I've I've been to Kitchener and seen the behind behind the scenes. I've I've seen Plymouth. Well, Plymouth doesn't have a team anymore. They used to, but uh yeah, why don't you pitch it to them? You're you like to slide into companies DMs and pitch them Always. things like you did to, to daily face off. So let's DMs, let's LinkedIn, pitch. everything, everything. You're relentless. I'm an ideas, I'm an ideas guy, you know that. You're relentless. Yep. Um, but thank you to everyone who watched the show today. It was a fun one. It, it, it went quick. We'll be back tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, with a lot to talk about, some topics that we didn't get to today, like we said. We'll talk about maybe Phil Kessel being a part of the Vancouver Canucks. Um, but hope you all have a great day. Thanks to everyone listening. Thanks to our producer, Vic. And we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Happy Valentine's What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.